Manchester United attempting to hijack Aston Villa's £50 million deal for Everton's Amadou Onana. Anthony apparently up for loan this summer and Manuel Ugarte crazy price tag set. These are some of the stories we will be discussing on this morning's show. But before we get into that, please smash a like on today's video. Let's try and see a thousand likes on this episode. And if this is your first time watching, please do subscribe to the channel. I'm live every single day at 8.30, 1.30 and 6 p.m. UK time. So if you want to keep up to date with all of your latest Manchester United transfer news and talk, this is the best way to do it. Everyone is welcome. Make sure you get involved. Right. Let's start the show off by talking about Manuel Ugarte. For anybody who missed the news last night, Manchester United have now agreed terms with Manuel Ugarte. He wants to come to the club. He spoke to Eric Ten Hag. He understands his role within the squad and he has agreed on wages. Great. Massive tick. But there is a big issue. PSG are apparently demanding £59 million. Pounds, 70 million euros which is ridiculous. They paid 50 million euros for him last season. He spent most of the, the year on the bench. The reason they're doing this is because they then are going to go and use the money to buy Joao Neves. They are reportedly close to agreeing a 75 million pound uh, euros deal with Benfica for Joao Neves. They're effectively getting us to pay for Joao Neves for them. Ridiculous. And I don't think Manchester United should go anywhere near the deal for Manuel Ugarte at these types of conditions. It, it just doesn't make sense. He's not a 70 million euros player. I would personally be looking to do a loan with an option to buy next summer or a loan with an obligation to buy next summer. They want to sell the player. The player wants to leave and they're already discussing with uh, Benfica to sign his replacement. Like they don't have any power in this situation. They want rid of him. He wants to leave and they've already found his replacement. So Manchester United need to be very clever here. And from what we've seen of Ineos so far in this window, I have absolute faith that they will get a good deal over the line here for Manuel Ugarte. And I would be absolutely shocked if they paid anywhere near to 70 million euros. I think they'd be lucky to get 50 million euros. And even then, I think maybe that's a little bit too high when you factor in all of the circumstances I just met. But obviously, you can let me know in the comments section, would you be happy with Manuel Ugarte for 70 million euros? Let me know your thoughts. Or would you potentially prefer to see Amadou Onana come instead? Let me know. If you had to pick between Amadou Onana and Manuel Ugarte, who would you go for? Let me know in the comments section right now. Uh, moving on from that, let's move over over to Anthony. And the headline this, this morning is that apparently Manchester United are now actively looking to let Anthony go this summer. Apparently, they're happy to let him leave on loan. And as long as the other club cover his wages, he will be allowed to go. They've realised no one's going to buy him. We paid 100 million euros for him two seasons ago. We got absolutely mugged off by Ajax. We gave him 200 grand a week wages when he was only on 20 grand a week at Ajax. Like, we are stupid, but obviously Ineos are not stupid. They are running the club properly. This was the Glazers. This was Ed Woodward. This was John Murta. This was Richard Arnold who did that stupid deal. People blame it on Eric Ten Hag, but he wasn't sat in the room negotiating the deal. Now, I would happily see Anthony go out on loan. I think it's the best option for everybody. He can go somewhere, get game time. Hopefully his value then goes up and then next summer we can sell him. Because the alternative is he stays and then Eric Ten Hag probably feels like he has to play him because he spent 100 million euros on a player and you can't just have him sat on the bench. It makes Anthony and Eric Ten Hag look bad. And I think this season, we really, really want to see Ahmad get game time. We want to see Sancho get game time if he stays. So for me personally, let Anthony go out on loan. It makes a lot of sense. People are going to be coming in the comments saying, saying we should sell him, we should sell him. You can only sell a player if there's someone willing to buy. And nobody wants to buy him. The only interested parties are loans. So we'll wait and see what happens with that one. But I would be very happy with Anthony going out on loan for a season, rebuilding his career, Hopefully his price goes up and then hopefully in a year's time we can get some of the money we paid back for him. Because if we put him up for sale now, I reckon we'd be lucky to get 20, 30 million euros. And that's probably being kind. His stock price is at rock bottom. Nobody wants him unless it's a loan deal. So yeah, hopefully we can get this one over the line. Obviously we know that Juventus are looking for a new right winger. Maybe they go for him instead of Jadon Sancho. That's an option. So yeah, I'll keep you updated on that one. Uh, the next story is on Andreas Pereira. You're probably thinking, why are we talking about him? He doesn't play for Man United anymore. Well, apparently in the last couple of minutes, Chelsea have submitted a £35 million bid for Andreas Pereira. Again, you're probably thinking, why are you talking about this? Manchester United have a 20% sell-on clause in the contract when we sold Andreas Pereira to Fulham. So if we sell, uh, sorry, if they do sell him to Chelsea, which looks like it is going to go ahead, we will get £7 million for that. I'm really, really happy about that. That's amazing. And 
And that £7 million could go a long way. You know, that could go towards Ferdi Kadioglu, the left back. Maybe that could even go towards Amrabat, £12 million asking price from Fiorentina. So yeah, good bit of business there. Um, I'm a little bit surprised that Chelsea are going for him. I, I think he was pretty average at Manchester United. I know at Fulham he's done quite well, but yeah, I, I am surprised. But then at the same time, it's Chelsea and nothing surprises me with Chelsea. So I'm, I'm happy. £7 million for Manchester United. We can't really complain about that. And I wish Andreas Pereira all the best. Uh, he worked hard. He you know, was a good personality to have around the club. I just don't think he is top four, top five level central attacking midfielder. But Chelsea seem to obviously think he is. So Chelsea are welcome to him. We'll take the £7 million. Happy days for Manchester United. Um, okay, let's move on to... Uh, Amadou Onana. So this came out in the last couple of minutes from a very, very reliable Belgian journalist. He was the first person to break the story that Amadou Onana was going to join Aston Villa. And he is reporting in the last couple of minutes that apparently Manchester United are attempting to hijack Aston Villa's deal for Amadou Onana. Apparently Manchester United have matched the offer, £50 million. Amadou Onana is currently on holiday and is due back in England, uh, it says, tomorrow. At the moment, at this moment in time, it still looks like he's going to go to Aston Villa. He hasn't signed the contract yet. He hasn't done the medical. Apparently, the medical is booked for Sunday and Aston Villa want to announce the player on Monday. What do you think about this? £50 million for Amadou Onana. Should Manchester United go ahead with this? Or do you think it would be better to go and get Manuel Ugarte? Obviously, as I said a couple of minutes ago, PSG are demanding £59 million. So £9 million more than what Amadou Onana is available for. Um, apparent, apparently, Amadou Onana has spoken to Unai Emery and you know has been sold the idea of the club and wants to join Aston Villa. But there is still the potential that Manchester United can take this deal off them because they have matched the bid, £50 million. I think it's £45 million up front, plus £5 million in add-ons and a 10% sell-on clause. So it's not too bad, £45 million. I personally think Manuel Ugarte is a better CDM and we need a CDM. I think Onana's decent, but I'm not sure if he is on the level of Manuel Ugarte. But let me know what you think. Who would you prefer? Manuel Ugarte for £59 million, although Man United won't pay that. It will probably be a loan with an option to buy for £50 million, I think. So let's just for argument say that both players are available for £50 million because I can't see Man United paying more than £50 million for Manuel Ugarte. And even that, I think, is maybe a bit high. But let's say for argument's sake, they're both available for £50 million. Who would you go for? Amadou Onana, Premier League experience, £50 million, Or Manuel Ugarte for £50 million? Get in the comment section. Let me know. It's quite a difficult one for me because obviously... Amadou Onana does have that Premier League experience, but I still do think Manuel Ugarte is a better player for what we need at the moment. We need a specialist CDM and Manuel Ugarte is a specialist CDM. We tried to sign him last summer before he joined PSG. There are lots of clubs interested in, in Manuel Ugarte. He's just come off the back of a really successful uh, Copper America and I watched most of those games and he does look really, really good. So I would personally go for him and I think that Manchester United have the opportunity with Manuel Ugarte to get a cut price deal. PSG can ask for 59 million, but they're not going to get it. And we know that they need the money to buy Joao Neves. So they're going to have to drop the asking price because at the moment, we're the only ones leading the race. He wants to come. He's agreed terms. So either they sell him to us or they have to start the whole process again, find a new club. Does he want to go there? How much are they going to pay? Wages and all the rest of it. So yeah, um, I would go with Manuel Ugarte, although this option for Amadou Onana is still there. There is concrete. that The bid has gone in. Uh, it just depends on what Amadou Onana wants to do. But again, you can let me know in the comment section, who would you go for, Amadou Onana or Manuel Ugarte? And what I will say is this, right? Ineos are making moves at the moment. They are making some serious moves. Lenny Yoro through the door, taken from Real Madrid, Liverpool and PSG. Um, you've got Joshua Xerxes on the brink of signing for AC Milan. He's now ours. Delict, terms agreed, waiting in the background to join. Now you've got Amadou Onana, Manuel Ugarte, you've got Rabio waiting, desperate to come. Like all of these players want to join this club. And yeah, I'm, I'm just really, really happy with, with the mood at the moment. I think it's very, very positive. And uh, I can't wait to see how the rest of the transfer window pans out, especially with people like McTominay, Lindelof, Maguire, Casemiro, all expected to leave as well. It's been a really good window so far. And I think it's only going to get better. But make sure you get in the comment section. Let me know, Manuel Ugarte or Amadou Onana. Let me know your thoughts. Make sure you subscribe to the channel as well. I'll be back live at 1.30. And please smash a like on the video before you leave. This has been Daily Red Devil. Thank you very much for joining me and I'll speak to you all on the next one. Bye for now.